You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. Hmm. Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. And we are back with more of the original Mass Effect. Hill here, and with me, Commander Sindarius Shepard. We're in the medical bay of the Normandy SR-1. Shepard has been nervously pacing back and forth. But it's time for him to go and talk to Liara. And this episode is going to be uh, chatting with the crew since we have completed another main story mission, Pharos. So there should be some updates and whatnot happenings going on with the crew that we will need to discover. It's a very important part of the game. And here we are, ready to talk to Liara. I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. I like talking with you, Liara, no matter what the subject. You have been very understanding with me, Shepard. Very patient. I appreciate that. I know there are some strange beliefs about my people. I am familiar with the legend of Asari promiscuity, but those rumors have little basis in fact. When one of my people joins with an individual from another species, it is a very deep and spiritual exchange. We do not enter lightly into a union. You make it sound almost mystical. A true union goes far beyond an ordinary melding. It is a connection that transcends the physical universe. Two become one. Thoughts and senses merge, identities intertwine. Memories and emotions weave themselves together, becoming entangled in a single, rapturous whole. It is unlike any other experience. In some cases, it can be a truly life-changing event. I bet it is. That sounds fantastic. All right, he's gonna go to the top of the wheel here. It sounds amazing. Are you saying... No! Oh, no! Uh, I am not very good at this, am I? I'm sorry, Shepard. I am trying to explain why I have been so... reserved. The Union is more than just sex. It is the lifeblood of my species, the way we Asari evolve and grow as a society. That is why I have never... Uh, I mean, that is why we must choose our partners with great care. I want you to be absolutely sure about this, Liara. I am only 106, barely an adult by Asari standards, and I spend most of my time absorbed in my research. I never really thought about it, not until I met you. You are very special to me, Shepard. But with all that's happened, Saren, the Geth, the Reapers, I do not know if we are ready for this. Uh-oh. I'm ready, if you are. Eager is not the same as ready, Shepard. There is too much at stake. Oh, no. We need to put aside our personal feelings and focus on stopping Saren. I wish it did not have to be that way, but we all have to make sacrifices. Let's, let's talk about something else. Did he say the wrong thing? All right, I guess we're done then. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Oh, I got 120 experience from that. Okay. I don't think we have anything else to say to the doctor. Uh, we got to hear her story. Let's go over here and talk to Kate. Anything you need, Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? I'm glad there aren't many aliens like the Thorian. I don't think my stomach could take it. Hmm. Out of a deal you worked out with John, though. <laughs> 
If I ever get a speeding ticket, I want you to be my advocate. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I didn't figure you'd have time to talk with all that's going on. There's gotta be some xenobiologists who want to read about the Thorian. All in triplicate, I'm sure. Did you want to see me? I'm just looking for an ear. That a briefing wasn't the right place to say how ridiculous this is. It seems like every other race in the galaxy is wrapped up in their own problems. They don't want to see what's coming. So can I guess this will add to your resentment against aliens? Resentment? Against aliens? I mean, I'm not... <laughs> what makes you think that? Goodness, I'm trying to be careful with what I say, but I I've got to be a renegade. I think you'd carry a grudge over the crap you took from Vernus. Before I met Vernus, I knew as much as any other civilian. Aliens were weird, superior, and tried to tell us what to do. I mean, it's only been 26 years since first contact. That's not a lot of time to understand them. It was Vernus who made me see how human aliens are. They're not different or special. They're jerks and saints, just like us. Hell, by the time I got payback, I didn't even want it anymore. I'm glad to hear the bastard got what he deserved. He didn't deserve... He hurt Rana. Broke her arm. She reached for a glass of water instead of pulling it biotically. She just wanted a drink without getting a nosebleed. You know? Like an idiot, I stood up. Didn't know what I was gonna do. Just something. And Vernus lost it. Beat the crap out of me. Kept shouting how they should have bombed us back to the Stone Age. And that's when the knife came up. A military issue talon. Right in my face. I cut loose. Full biotic kick right in the teeth. Almost as strong as I can manage now. At 17, that's something. Sat down by a kid. Vernus must have hated that. He didn't have time to hate it. I killed him. Oh, no. Snapped his neck. Like a twig. They probably could have saved him if they got him to an infirmary quick enough. But they didn't. Caused a stir when they shipped him home. Bot training was shut down. Kinetics folded a couple of years later. So, yeah, maybe I hated that Turian. I mean, if one ass was enough to judge a whole race, I'd hate humans too. <laughs> I don't know. You don't seem angry about the Council strong-arming the Alliance. Commander, I thought real hard about how to use my talents. When I swore the oath to defend the Alliance, it wasn't on a whim. If it comes down to it, I am a soldier. I have to believe that my superiors can tell our enemies from people who disagree with us. If the Alliance is missing its chance, it's because of men like Odina, not the rest of the galaxy holding us back. Of course, your opinion is the one that matters, Commander. You're free to believe whatever you want, Lieutenant. Just follow orders. Yes, sir. <laughs> I should return to my duties now. Commander? We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? Okay, 120 experience for that conversation. Okay, I think we're gonna have to go below deck. Talk to the people down here. This may go quickly. I don't know if uh, Garrus is ready for us yet, but let's see. Commander, good to see you. You've been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but yeah, I've seen some interesting things. I'll bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. Uh-oh, here it comes. That case was a bit disturbing. Dr. Saleon. What happened? Why were you investigating them? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts. Organs, mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab, or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. You've seen this before on the Citadel? Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market. But they're not as bad as the psychos. 
I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs, had the station in a bit of a panic. But this case wasn't that clear-cut. Turns out there was more going on than we first realized. So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, mm -hmm. the geneticist. So I went to his lab, hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. Really? You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. Hmm. Somebody's making a killing out there. Krogan have a lot of testicles. What did you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. Yeah? Go on. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes. Walking, living test tubes. So he was growing spare parts in his own employees. Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most mm. of them were a mess, but only on the inside, hidden so nobody could see it. I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties if the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. We just used them to make more organs. They wouldn't listen. No wonder you hated it there. Those idiots just let him fly away. Yes, they did. I went to Palin and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. All right, you see I'm getting him riled up, fired up, grooming him to become a renegade. A few casualties is a small price to pay to stop someone like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those hostages might be wishing they'd died by now anyway. Just wish I could have stopped him. That's all. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salion? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart. His idea of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Salion, I want to be there when you find him. Of course, absolutely. All right, 120 more experience. Um, we'll say hello to Rex. We should be done with conversations with him now that we got his family armor. Shepard. So, you'd rather be a merc than help your people? I'm a fighter. It's what I do. Aren't you at all worried about what will happen to the Krogan? What the hell do you want me to do about it, Shepard? I'm tired of sticking my ass on the line and getting nothing for it. 
So you decided to go your own way? I decided killing for credits was better than killing for a lost cause. I'm no hero, Shepard. Bottom line, killing for credits simplifies things. Exactly. That's why I hired you. Mm. And that's why I joined. So I wouldn't have to deal with them. But there's a lot of Krogan mercs out there. I'm always running into them. Half the time I'm being paid to kill them. But that's just part of the job. You don't get to pick who your enemies are. How long have you been a merc? Long enough. I took my first contract right after I left my home system. It's good work, but doesn't kill you. I get the feeling you enjoy your work. Sure. You get to see the galaxy on someone else's credits, and most days end with a good fight. I've tried more organized fighting, private armies and such, but it gets too messy. I fight best on my own, or in very small groups. I don't like people relying on me, and I bloody well don't like relying on them. So long, Rex. Shepard. Ooh, 120 from him, too. All right, now we have to go down here and talk to my jilted potential lover. Commander? Do you have a few minutes to talk one-on-one? -on -one? I'm off duty until tomorrow. I was gonna have a small drink. Bit of a celebration. If you're interested. Wow. Um, what's the occasion? I thought she was done with me. What's the occasion? It's Armistice Day, when the first contact war ended. My family always marks it. Since I'm the only Williams aboard, I thought I'd ask you. Hmm? Seems like an odd thing to celebrate. That was 26 years ago. In our family, it's not really a celebration, more like an obligation. Don't tell me you don't know about my family. My commanders always find out. It's not in my files or something? There's almost nothing in your files. Technical scores and a list of crap assignments. There's a reason for the crap assignments. I'm General Williams' granddaughter, the commander of the Shanxi garrison in the war. The only human ever to surrender to an alien race. You're blacklisted because of your grandfather's cowardice. Cowardice. That's what the Terra Firma party calls it. I'm not gonna let our name go down with Arnold and Quisling. Granddad deserved better than that. What happened to your grandfather after the war? He was relieved of command as soon as Shanxi was liberated. They brought him back to Earth in irons, but there was never a trial. They quietly demoted him and stuck him behind a desk. He retired a year later and spent the rest of his life working construction in the colonies. Sometimes we hear about attempts to get him exonerated in some official way. Nothing ever comes of him. As I recall, your grandfather held out for a long time. The Turians wrecked the orbitals in the first wave and occupied the major cities. They sat in orbit, dropping rocks on anything that moved. Granddad dispersed the troops, but when they went into the cities for supplies, the Turians would wreck a block to eliminate one fire team. Civilians were dying, his troops were starving, and he couldn't contact Alliance High Command. So he surrendered the garrison. Is this why you're always going on about the Council? If everyone else can look at Shanxi and say, this is why humanity needs to be stronger, then so can I. I'm entitled. So now you know. Gonna kick me off the ship, Skipper? Hmm. You're tough and decisive. I value those qualities. Just consider me a fire-and-forget missile. But anyway, I've got things to do before we land. I'm sure you do too. What's your opinion on the last mission? Gotta admire those Colonials. That's about the worst place for a colony I've ever seen. Given the option, I'd get the hell out of Dodge. Dismiss, Chief. Sir. Okay, 120 experience there as well. 
So I guess we're uh, we're okay. She's not holding a grudge. Let's talk to Tally. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Why are you so cheerful? I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. I know Steren's our top priority, but with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. What are you hoping to find? Usually, people bring back something like a derelict ship we can use for salvage. But I need something bigger. There's a lot expected of me. What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. So are you some kind of heir to the Quarian throne or something? No, it doesn't work that way. My father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve on the Admiralty Board myself. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up. But it's not all good. People like my father have enemies. And they're not above using me to get to him. Why didn't you tell me this before? I guess I'm just tired of people judging me because of who my father is. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. If I don't, it's like I failed. And that reflects badly on both me and my father. <laughs> what if we save the galaxy, okay? The work you're doing here is more important than anything any Quarian has ever done before. Yes, I know. But you have to understand Quarian culture. We're a very insular society. The events beyond the flotilla don't much matter to the average citizen. Our greatest dream is that one day, we'll return to our homeworld and drive out the Geth. But even if we stop Saren, that's not going to happen. There's still millions of Geth behind the veil. Until they're gone, our exile will continue. What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the Exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Saren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own, independently. But I don't want this to get in the way of our mission, Shepard. First, we stop Saren. Then I'll worry about my own problems. What was your father like? It wasn't easy growing up as the daughter of one of the Admiralty. Even before he joined the board, he was a prominent figure. People looked to him for leadership. He had to set an example, and he expected the same of his daughter. Plus, he was pretty strict, a military man through and through. He never allowed me to settle for anything less than excellence. As a kid, I sometimes felt like he was pushing me too hard. But now, I'm old enough to appreciate what he taught me. The world doesn't owe us anything. If we want something in life, we have to earn it. Sounds like a tough upbringing. You don't resent your father at all? Like I said, it wasn't easy. My father's not the kind of person you bond with. And he wasn't around all that much. Too busy. People counted on him, and he took his duties seriously. Even when he was around. He always seemed a bit distant, like his mind was always somewhere else. Come to think of it, I can't ever remember seeing him smile. Not once. It's like he was always weighed down by all that responsibility. I mean, I know he cares about me, but he never really showed it, not in the usual way. I guess the best thing I can say about my father is that I respect him. Where was your mother in all this? Mother was around, but she always seemed to kind of blend into the background. Almost like she was overshadowed by my father. He tends to do that to people. She passed on about five years ago, 
Some airborne virus that swept through the fleet. Happens sometimes when the filters start to break down. I think my father took it pretty hard. After she was gone, he became even more focused on his work. I think that was his way of dealing with the grief. I want to talk about something else. Like what? Looks like we've talked about everything. I should go. See you later. 240 experience. Thank you, Tally. Okay. We have chatted up the crew again. We have gotten a quest from Garrus. Let me just see about this drink here. Can Are we having this drink? Commander? Do you have a few minutes to talk one-on-one? -on -one? I should get back to my duty, Skipper. Uh -oh. Rifles don't maintain themselves. Not yet, anyway. Dismiss, Chief. Sir. Okay, so that probably ends up... Uh, conversation with Ashley. Alright, um, I think that's it. We'll go ahead and end the video here. And I'm not sure what we're going to be doing in the next episode, but it will probably be more than talking. But I've enjoyed it. I, I love how character-driven Mass Effect is, was... I mean, these characters, they just have so much life, and, you know, you come to, I don't know, care for them. I mean, they, they become like a part of your family, almost. And I, I really thoroughly enjoyed the series, the trilogy, except for the end of Mass Effect 3. We won't, won't deal with that just yet. But, um, yeah, amazing. And if I haven't... Um, recommended this game I, I do wholeheartedly the entire trilogy I mean especially you know this this one Mass Effect 1 was excellent Mass Effect 2 is by far my favorite I, 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 I can't recommend it highly enough and then there's Mass Effect 3 but um, yeah this this was a fantastic trilogy this is my favorite game you know, ever made, and I, I mean, nothing has ever come close to this as far as, you know, actually caring about characters and whatnot, and, you know, in the, the second game, the combat gets an overhaul, because it, it's very clunky in this game here, but it's still fun to me to play. All right, well, that's, that's enough for um, endorsing uh, Mass Effect, and no, I'm not being paid. Anyhow... Thank you all for watching. This is Hill, and I'm out.